Well, praise the Lord Yeshua Jesus Christ. This is Pamela Ray with Hope for Today, your hostess for the next few minutes, half an hour, I don't know, because I always pray and I'm led by the Holy Spirit every time I do a broadcast like this. Praise God. First of all, I want to say glory be to God that I was so sick and filled with so much pain and suffering and health conditions. I said, Lord, you have to heal me. I have too many people out there I love. I want to reach for Yeshua or Jesus. I want to touch hearts, touch lives, and bless your children too. So, Lord, for their sake, for the sakes of those, I must reach for you. Heal me completely. And the Lord did. I am pain-free. My skin is healed. I am so blessed. God answers prayer, and I am moving forward. Excuse me one minute, friends. I forgot to grab a bottle of water. Very important. So if you'll excuse me one minute. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. I get so excited about doing these videos, I forget. I better have a bottle of water because my voice gets very dried out. Oh, by the way, yeah, I have my keyboard on tonight for some wonderful music, including Christmas music. And I mean holy, sacred, sanctifying, not Santa Rock and all these carnal pagan things that have nothing to do with the birth of the one true Messiah and the Savior of the world, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Well, let me get some water right now, friends. Yes, I'm so afraid of the toxins in the waters today. When I, I'm not using my Berkey, which I usually do, but I always try to get a very healthy quality of water, and Penta has never let me down for many, many years. Penta goes through a 12, I believe, a 12-step purifying process which is essential today because of all the trace pharmaceuticals, chemicals, carcinogens, all kinds of things out there, pesticides. So anyhow, I like to have water that's going to bless my health so I can bless the Lord and serve the Lord and touch lives of people like you. Praise God. But as I was saying, the Lord Jesus stepped in and healed me completely. Oh, I was suffering agonizing pain. And I said, Lord, what is this? A Job test or something? I'm going through agonizing pain. And no matter what I do, I'm not getting relief. But I am choosing. Friends, you know, your Christian walk is what you make it. I said, Lord, I am choosing to praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Nonstop through all this pain and anguish. Day and night. And it was relentless. But I said, Lord, I don't understand it, but I know you'll bring me through. It could have been GMOs in the food that I ate. It could have been toxins in something I drank. And then it gets stored in your body to create grief and uh, all kinds of problems afterwards. But all I know is that by his stripes, I am healed. I stood on his word relentlessly throughout much pain. Pain that was so severe that I was literally brought to tears. But thanks to all of you out there praying for me and I know you were and people told me so your prayers have made such a difference friends oh I'm so thankful I truly am and the Lord came through so that I can get some ministering done during this precious Christmas week frankly I'll be very surprised if we have any more Christmas or Thanksgiving by this time next year because of where things are going right now with what's happening in Israel and Gaza and as one Israeli uh, retired general said, he said, well, Israel would have to stop everything they're doing militarily within a week or two if it were not for the constant flow of our bombs, our missiles, our helicopters, our planes, our bullets. They said we'd have to stop in a week or two. Oh, my gosh. Um, and, you know, I'm going to tell you, the nations of the earth have taken note. Russia, with many allies in the Middle East, China, Arab nations, and 
while they're very angry right now at Israel for this very clear genocide that is going on there. It, <laughs> every news analyst I know and read says, yes, it's absolutely a horrific genocide. Infants, children, oh, even Christians in their churches. Um, but it reminded me of what I published years ago in my reports where a U.S. Air Force source from Kirtland Air Force Base said this. He said, it's not a matter of if, but when. There will be nuclear strikes on American soil because of America's foreign policies in the Middle East and, of course, it all centers around Israel. And so... <clears throat> People are angry, of course, at the indiscriminate, horrific indiscriminate bombing that is going on, affecting infants, children, helpless, elderly, Christians and their churches. Oh, the horrors. And I've been posting it on my Facebook page. But again, Russia and all the others are saying, but Israel couldn't do this. If America weren't funding this, therefore, if we hit America, it's going to stop. And their escalation uh, for a greater Israel project, as they say, and Bibi Netanyahu says, it'll stop. So, friends, I'm going to tell you, as this man from Kirtland Air Force Base said, and I never forgot it and published it, have prayed against it all the time, he said it's not a matter of if, but when. There will be nuclear strikes on American soil because of America's foreign policies in the Middle East, speaking specifically about Israel. And he said that's why we are stockpiling now in the deep underground bases deep below the earth. We are stockpiling up to 10, 10 years of emergency food supplies in the deep underground bases in full anticipation of a prolonged nuclear exchange. Now let that sink in, friends. I have wept. I have cried out to God many years since I originally published that, wondering when it was going to finally reach that point of America's foreign policies in the Middle East that would bring the wrath of the nations that do have hypersonic missiles and thermobaric bombs like Russia and China that America has no antidote for. And Russia has many allies, including Iran and other countries there. And they're saying, oh, America, we see what you're doing. No more. And I'm afraid it will. In fact, I can't play the game of pretend many Christians are because they can't deal with reality. 28 years of investigative journalism pleading with the Lord, Father, show me where America is going. What is coming to America? I want to be an intercessor over my nation. Well, friends, you better be careful about what you pray for because what God has shown me has broken my heart for many, many years, filling me with intercessory prayer, weeping, tears, fasting over this nation, having prayer journeys across America, back and forth, north, south, east, west, thousands of miles, living months at a time in my vehicle and because I couldn't afford a motel to do it. I slept in my vehicle day and night, winter and summer, blizzard and all, so I could weep, fast, pray and cry out to the Lord for my nation, America and Canada, because we are all part, as I've shared in previous uh, broadcasts, Canada, America, and Mexico, in the sight of the New World Order, it's all one region, region number one of the 10 world regions of the New World Order. And the Bible says, the book of Revelation, this last great evil, dark, satanic world government that will seek to put the Christians to death by beheading, Revelation 20 verse 4, it will have 10 world leaders underneath their Antichrist or new Messiah or world leader of the new world order. And America, lo and behold, of course, is region number one, or so they hope. Millions of good Americans have said, heck no. Not in my backyard, not anytime soon. And uh, <laughs> we won't discuss what measures they've taken to make sure that doesn't happen. But nevertheless, there will be a resistance, a true new world order resistance in America and Canada. Because nobody in their right mind is going to submit to a horrific, tyrannical, seize everything you have, bring you under a, a horrific, godless, evil, dark, oppressive world government which you have zero freedom oh are you kidding like the old saying says from our ancestors in our american early american uh, history give me liberty or give me death my bible says jesus christ came to give us liberty and freedom and to set the captive free 
but it is Satan and those under his wicked influence who comes to steal, kill, and destroy and to bring you into bondage and oppression. And that's what godless cults and governments like communism and Marxism and many others do. They take away the people's individual rights and freedoms. They, they persecute their Christian faith and even kill and murder Christians as they have done in communist countries over the past 100 years. God has a better plan for his people. It's called liberty. The Bible says, you have been called unto liberty, freedom. Jesus said, he or she whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Praise the Lord God, and I intend to remain free. And I pray every day, Father, keep me alive in freedom, in liberty, and health and blessing, and not in captivity or persecution or tribulation, so I am free to minister the gospel. And someday the Lord told me he would send me all over the world. That was many years ago. He said, but at the right time, and I'm saying, Lord, I know now is the right time. He is setting me free from everything in the past and moving me on to new vistas, new ministries, new people, new calling, new locations, and God has a plan, definitely better than Satan's plan. I refuse Satan's plans in my life of some very things I said, this is what the new Lord has planned for you. FEMA camps, boxcars and shackles, guillotines. Yes, it's all very real. It's all very true in the right year in my state. I've documented these things for years. But the plans of Satan for your life and mine as Christians and the plans of Almighty God for his beloved people like me and you are two different things. For example, Bible prophecy for hundreds of years spoke about God sending the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Oh yes, Isaiah and others, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And all this wonderful prophecy. And God absolutely made sure it came to pass. But Satan tried to disrupt the plans of Almighty God. Because when the three wise men from the east came, they came to Herod the Great in Jerusalem and said, Where is he that is born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and we have come to worship him. And when Herod heard that and all these religious leaders in Jerusalem heard that, they were troubled. And uh, the religious leader said, well, it says here that Bethlehem uh, of Judea, uh, the, the leader shall come, the Messiah shall come, the Hamashiach shall come out of Bethlehem of Judea. And Herod, though, felt challenged at that point. He was a very wicked, evil, corrupt man. He said, oh, well, <laughs> go find this young child. Bring me word of him so that I too may go and worship this newborn king of the Jews. So the three wise men, and there's probably many more than three, and they probably had an entourage of camels and riches and wealth and all to present to this wonderful baby Jesus. So they made their way to where he was, and uh, they brought their gifts and all those wonderful things to him as the Bible records. But they were later warned in a dream, do not go back the same way you came and don't go back to Herod because he seeks to kill the child. And so they obeyed the revelation from God and they did not go back to Herod. Herod planned to destroy him. And the, the, the gold and, and the, all the expensive things that were given to Joseph and Mary came just in time because they were warned later in a dream or by an angel Flee, take the young child and flee to Egypt because Herod seeks his life to destroy it. Well, that was Satan's plan against the Lord Jesus Christ as an infant. But praise God, as scripture records, the plans of the living God for his people are greater. And it is written, we, shall, we must pray this every day. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven because every day Satan is out to steal, kill, and destroy to destroy the destiny God has planned for your life. The enemy is fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. We live in a dual kingdom world, friends, where there is a kingdom of Almighty God and His holy angels, His holy Son, and those of us who are the redeemed of the Lord who belong to His kingdom. But on the other side, you have Satan and His kingdom that Jesus Christ Himself even spoke of, that Satan had a kingdom. You bet when people worship Satan for money and power, you bet he has a kingdom. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 13 that Satan has a throne. It is a corrupt counterfeit to God's. He has 
authority and he has uh, a throne power and great authority those three things are all counterfeits to that which the living God has hallelujah and they are corrupt and they will be destroyed out of all creation someday but for now unfortunately we see Satan's kingdom operating in the world today in fact former Satanists that I interviewed said look what you Christians need to understand is the new world order is simply Satan's kingdom manifesting on earth and the Satanists are the backbone and uh, Satan's the head honcho and that's why you Christians have to go to FEMA camps or the guillotines or whatever because this woman was speaking from working for the New World Order inside the CIA, one of the biggest satanic agencies in the world. She said, we sat around discussing in the CIA, how the heck do you get rid of those Christians who stand in the way of our New World Order agenda? She said, we knew that no real genuine Christians would ever accept a satanic world government with Lucifer at the head and Satan is ruling the world. I said, you're right, we won't. Over my dead clutching body and beheaded body, <laughs> I won't go along with it in the name of Jesus. I'm called to resist the devil and he shall flee. I'm not called to meekly sit back and cooperate with Satan's plan for my destruction, friends, and neither are you. So she said, you Christians need to get with it and understand what you're dealing with when you're dealing with the New World Order. So I've been praying using spiritual warfare ever since that revelation many years ago. But it says in Revelation, speaking of this end time antichrist kingdom, that Satan, the dragon, will give to this beast of the New World Order his throne, his power, and great authority. It's a satanic 666. Antichrist behead the Christian world government, but only on the earth for a very brief, brief time. Because Jesus Christ is coming to put down all principalities and powers. He's coming to take his children out of the earth, but he's also returning in power and glory and all of his saints with him to set up his millennial kingdom on earth praise God the almighty glory be unto his name so we have the kingdom of almighty God and company and we Christians and the kingdom of Satan and his cronies his henchmen I could name names but I don't want to get sued by multi-billionaires but it's not hard to figure out friends who's uh, the rich the elite and the powerful of the Satan's new world order oh please they are neither rich nor elite, nor powerful in the sight of Almighty God. Instead, they are the wretched, they are the poverty-stricken, they are the accursed, and the damned forevermore, forever turning to Satan. And human sacrifice of innocent children and infants to get power from Satan, to bring down the new order, to get money and power. My friend Elaine, former satanic high priestess over Indiana, for 18 years before she came out to become a Christian, and tell all when I was at her home in Okeechobee, Florida, many years ago, um, uh, she she let me know that um, here's what a basic Satanism 101. The more human sacrifice you offer to Satan, the more money and power he will give you. And the more brutality and torture and cruelty you inflict on an innocent victim, the more money and power Satan will give you. This is what drives countless people entrapped in what they call the craft of the brotherhood or the illuminati to do these things because they really believe the lies from the pits of hell that oh if i worship satan all will be mine in fact a friend of mine a retired uh, cop who worked as a security guard in a mall in Asheville, north carolina he didn't realize that the owner I won't, again i know the name but i won't mention it the owner called him into his office when they said hey son here sit down um how would you like to become a part of the rich, the elite, the powerful? Why money can be yours, power can be yours. Why here? Here's a blank check. I'll put it right here. You can fill it out for any amount you want. But my friend was a Christian, and when he was in law enforcement, he dealt with satanic crimes back in Virginia. He said, wait a minute. How do I know whether or not you're, you're a bunch of those Satan people, those devil people? And he said, the man said, well, son... That's in North Carolina. They had an accent there. <laughs> well, son, uh, we don't like to think of ourselves that way. But, yes, human sacrificing child, raping, murdering, pedophiling, Satanists for money and power. Well, 
Jesus had the same thing pulled on him by Satan. He was out there fasting and praying according to the will of God for 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible records faithfully that Satan came to him. He said, hey, uh, let me paraphrase this. I'm not going to quote it, but we'll put it in modern language. Hey, Jesus, come out up here on this mountain. Let me show you all these kingdoms of the earth, the kings, their power, their pomp. Oh, their riches and glory. And he said, now, all of it's been turned over to me. And I give it to whoever I please. Now, Jesus, if you'll just worship me, all this will be yours. And I can, I, in my heart and mind, I can see Jesus, the Son of God, breaking out into the most holy laughter you can even imagine. Because you see, he was God in the flesh, God incarnate. God already owns all of heaven and earth and every treasure in the earth and the mountains and the seas. And God owns everything and all the treasures of heaven too. He already had it all. Why would he ever want to turn to a fallen angel who is doomed to everlasting destruction in the lake of fire and his angels with him and his followers too? Long before Jesus was sent to earth to a, a sacred divine human body, he was with the Father. He was there when Lucifer rebelled and took a third of the angels with him and God cast them out of heaven and Jesus was part of doing that. He must have been thinking, Satan, what kind of fool are you? I already have all these things. I'm the Father's son. If I need anything, I turn to the one true God for everything. 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 Oh, what an idiot Satan was to try and come to the very son of the living God. So three times he pulled this garbage on Jesus, but Jesus knowing who he was, the almighty son of God, God in the flesh, God made manifest, Emmanuel, God with us, the mighty God, the everlasting father, as Isaiah the prophet said. Oh, he rebuked this whip, this wussy, this, this sickening fallen angel, and the devil had to flee. Jesus knew who he was. You know, and my Christian friend there in Asheville, North Carolina, that mall owner, he knew who he was in Christ and thought, why are you trying to tempt me when I already have everything I could ever want or need in heaven and earth because I have Jesus. I have Jesus. I have Jesus. Oh, these fools who worship a defeated foe called Satan. And I'm going to tell you, I don't mean to get sidetracked, but I'm going to tell you, you'd be maybe, maybe not surprised how many senators, congressmen, public figures, lawyers, mayors, DAs, police chiefs, sheriffs, judges. You'd be shocked to know how many people across America are into hardcore human sacrificing child raping, murdering Satanism, and they don't have to worry. I found out through research that in every city across America, the Satanists, especially the big, rich, powerful ones, the media ones, the Hollywood ones, and many others, they planted their own people in the courthouses, in judges' benches, in uh, courtrooms, in police and sheriff's departments to cover for their own so they never get successfully prosecuted. And of course, the news media will never expose them because some of the biggest media figures out there are by night human sacrificing, child raping, murdering Satanists. They cover for their own. I found this out through 28 years of investigative journalism. We have our job as Christians cut out for us friends in today's world. The Bible says Jesus Christ was manifested to destroy the works of the devil, not to tolerate them, not to peacefully coexist with them. Now, it's okay. We'll leave you alone. You do your Satan thing and we'll do our Christian thing. No, Jesus said we are commanded to manifest his power to tread on serpents and scorpions. We are called to resist the devil in every way God gives us, and he shall flee. I am not called to peacefully coexist with murderers and rapists and pedophiles and people who are planning the New World Order and planning to kill God's Christian children all over the world and right here in America and the FEMA camps, boxcars and shackles, guillotines stockpiled in so many military bases and right here in my state of Montana. And I know where, and my friends have seen them. And the truck drivers have told me they bring the guillotines in here all the time to Montana. It's all over the country. The devil is truly on a rampage 
and he is coming truly in these end times knowing his time is short to steal kill and destroy but the plans of satan for your life friends are not the plans of the lord god the almighty i don't care how many guillotines they have stockpiled here in a closed military base a few hours away here in montana I don't care how many boxcars and shackles, gunners and steel, all Portland, Oregon churned out for the government under secret contract over 100,000. And I met with a woman whose husband was a high executive with gunners and steel. She was a Christian and felt obligated to lecture one night to people both that work there, Christians that work there, and I was visiting and researching. She said, I've called this meeting in my home tonight to finally admit something. My husband finally admitted that this company, Gunderson Inc., is under secret contract with the U.S. government to produce over 100,000 prisoner boxcars with shackles. I said, yes, ma'am, to take my fellow Christians, patriots, etc., to the FEMA camps, Nazi style or Bolshevik style. They both did it under martial law. I said, you are correct. And she went on and lectured, and we prayed about it that very night. And here's where Christian intercessors come in. As we were praying against the satanic New World Order globalist, kill the Christians to get them out of our way of our New World Order agenda, we prayed and the Holy Spirit spoke that night. And he said, I tell you the truth, my children, if it were not for my prayer warriors praying that I would hold back, hold back, hold back this New World Order agenda for your America, you would be under it now. And I knew that. That's why I gave the best years of my life many years traveling back and forth across America, researching, publishing reports free of charge because I'm not in ministry for money. I care about people. That's why I did what I did. And I care about the body of Christ. I said, I will not be silent this hour. When former CIA, Pentagon, many people came forward throughout the years to confirm this is what they're planning for America, Canada, the globalists are, WEF. There's nothing I'm saying that Klaus Schwab doesn't know everything about Yuval Harari, many, many others. I said, well, again, Satan's plan against my life is not almighty God's plan for my life. And God wins and Satan loses. And these wicked people will go into perdition and they are losers, just like their father, Satan, who is the father of the new world order. So, you know, throughout the years, I've shared many things that are absolutely factual but very depressing and discouraging about the things that I've uncovered. But I want to give people a big ray of hope and say, friends, and this is something God impressed on me. Lord said, well, look how many times I thwarted the will of Satan, the will of the enemy, by intervening on behalf of my people. God has done it throughout the centuries, throughout the Old Testament and the New. Satan had something planned. Hey, Satan wanted the baby Moses round like all the other uh, Hebrew little boys, but God had a better plan for Moses' life, and he was rescued out of the uh, water in a little ark, a little boat made of bulrushes. God's plan prevailed, and he became the great leader to bring the Jews out of captivity to the promised land. You know, so many times Satan has an ugly plan for our lives. But as we pray, Father God, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I pray against the will of Satan, his followers, and, and sinful people all the time. And I pray, Father God, bless me with your will. Your will is greater. Your will is mightier. And Jesus Christ destroyed and defeated Satan when he died on that cross and rose again. I will not tolerate these wicked people imposing their satanic agendas, their satanic will, their Noahide laws and guillotines. Hey, lady, deny Christ. Become a Noahide. Submit to us and join our new order or we behead you. Are you kidding? In the name of Jesus, Satan, I rebuke you. You only come to steal, kill, and destroy. You're not robbing my soul, my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Nor are you taking my life. Jesus came that I may have life and have it more abundantly. God's plan for you, friends, is much greater then what a wicked world, a wicked new world order, wicked people, wicked governments, wicked evil people have for you. And you need to press in through faith and through prayer and standing on the word of God and covering your life, your future, your destiny with the will of God and the blood of the Lamb every single day as I do. I put on that full armor of God. I claim the perfect will of God over my life, which is to bless me. 
to prosper me, to heal me. And when I say prosper, please don't get the wrong idea. Friends, I have been out in ministry for years and how many times I had to pray in every bite of food, every gallon of gas I pumped, trusting God completely because I despise those who use ministry as a means of raking in the money, millions every month, living the life of, as they say of Riley, uh, big homes, gold-plated fixtures, even an air-conditioned doghouse. I saw it all living 13 years in the grounds of a Christian television ministry that fell because of love of money and sin that came into the camp. It had to fall because of the level of sin. But oh, they were living in opulence and luxury. While Christians like myself were putting our lives on the line, I was out there fighting. You know, I had a home on the grounds of that particular Christian television ministry. I was always gone out the front lines for Christ, within pro-life, getting arrested, going to jail, going to prison, to save the unborn peacefully and nonviolently from the horrible abortion clinics. Out there in the battlefields fighting literal Satanists in the mountains of North Carolina, standing with families that were under attack who would have died in some cases if I hadn't been there for them. You know, I cannot stand these kind of fake ministries where they're using television to reach into millions of homes and just suck in all that money. Big plane, expensive mansion when every cent should not have gone on a big expensive plane and oh the maintenance costs. And big expensive homes but on Bibles for those who don't have one. Helping to build churches for those who don't have one church. Helping to find missionaries willing to go out and lay their lives down and suffer and go without to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. That's where the tithes and the offerings and the widows' mites of God's people should be going and not to those living in opulence. The Kev Kenneth Copeland's, Benny Hinn's, <laughs> all of them. Joel Osteen, it makes me sick, Creflo Dollar. Oh, please, believe me. And I saw all living on the ground for Christian television ministry and good people in that ministry. We finally had to band together and say, Father, we see what's going on. There's gross sexual immorality. There's gross licentiousness, living like the world. They're taking money from people and the viewers have no idea what level of sin and corruption is in this ministry. Father, either clean it up or shut it down and shut it down, God did. It was never restored to the original owner and builder. Oh, God is not mocked. So when I'm saying I believe in God's blessing of plenty, I mean, God, give me the Bibles to reach the children on the Indian reservations. Give me the clothing and the food that they so lack. Give me what I need to reach one more soul for Christ, not so I can have some expensive limousine and, and, and a jet and, oh, God forbid. I have never lived that way. I never will live that way my whole life. I've lived for Christ. Whether there's money in it or not, I could care less. Mammon, filthy, damned and accursed, Illuminati currency with satanic symbols on it is not my God that I worship and serve and grovel before. I worship the living God who supplied my needs for over 50 years in ministry. Praise his holy name. Praise his glorious name. So, but I do believe in God's abundance for ministry, to reach the lost for him, Bibles, to travel, to be a missionary, to lay down our lives for the gospel. Yes, God is well pleased to provide for those things that are worthy in his sight. Hallelujah. Satan is out to destroy you, friends, and you're going to see more and more of that in America as the enemy gets bolder and bolder and bolder with things that are happening out there. But God's plan for you is better than Satan's. And you have every right and authority in Christ to resist and rebuke the devil, plead the blood of the Lamb on your life, your future, your destiny. Give your life completely to Jesus Christ. As the Bible says, submit yourself unto God completely. Are you really living for him? Are you really walking with him? Are you really serving him? Submit yourself unto him. Resist the devil and he shall flee. And that has proven true in my life now for many, many years, for over 50 years in ministry. I refuse to let the devil have his way unchallenged. And their guillotines and their boxcars and shackles and their FEMA camps above and beneath the ground, I curse every single day because I know it's the plan of Satan and Satanist planners and the intelligence community government, military, everybody working secretly for a New World Order agenda. They come in Satan's New World Order name to get rid of all the Christians that they believe stand in their way. Well, good. I want to stand in their way. I am a New World Order resistor. I am called to stand in the way of Satan and his agenda for my nation and my fellow Christians and my people. I am called to stand in the way of him who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I won't tolerate it. 
Oh, the prayers that I have sent up with tears on behalf of all of these millions of endangered Christians throughout this nation because I know they're planning for me to try and come for you. But I'm telling you, put on the full armor of God and join with me in intercessory prayer that God will defeat, rebuke, expose, and overcome this horrific martial law, New World Order agenda. And what they want to do is create false flags or staged catastrophes, explosions, whatever they're going to use. Oh, whatever they're going to pull out of a hat next. Uh, they want to create disasters um, sufficient to cause a true hardcore military takeover of martial law. Bring in the foreign troops, wheel out the guillotines, get the boxcars and shackles rolling down the tracks to the FEMA camps and get rid of those pesky Christians who also want to get rid of gun owners, constitutionalists, homeschoolers, pro-lifers, essentially all the good, solid, moral, upright, Christian-based, righteous people in this nation. Because they're nothing but a pack of dirty communists, Satanists, the corrupt of the earth who want to take over the world for Satan. They can't stand the good people. They're going to try to send them to the camp. So guess what? In the name of Jesus, we rebuke you. And we are never submitting to this kind of satanic, demonic agenda for Canada and America. In the name of Jesus. So friends, quit worrying about what the devil wants to do to you and say, I'm going to seek the Lord for the wonderful things he wants to do for me. God's will be done in my life on earth as it is in heaven. Start praying against these evil intentions of the enemy. And if we all stand together resisting the devil, we shall see him flee. God himself is against these wicked people who want to bring down a satanically based world government, WEF, New World Order. He himself will judge them. The Bible says the smoke of their damnation, their torment shall ascend forever and ever and ever. And they shall have no rest day or night. For their wickedness oh the wrath of god fear the wrath of god it's coming especially against those who seek to tempt god's children to deny jesus christ to then join the new world order and avoid being beheaded for their faith oh the wrath of god and hell is made ten thousand times hotter against any people any group any organization that's plotting horrible things to try and tempt christians to deny jesus christ and fall away oh the wrath of god and I don't want to be around to see it. I know from the word of God. So friends, there is hope. I don't care how dark it looks out there. The Lord has told me, keep praying against nuclear strikes on American soil. Keep coming against these martial law and new world order agendas that I've written about for years. Keep standing up for Jesus. Keep putting on the full armor of God. Keep fasting. Oh, fasting and praying is so important. And be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. We are not called to submit to Satan's plans for our destruction. I'm not called to meekly sit back and cooperate with Satan's plans of my destruction because in fact Jesus was sent from heaven by God to destroy Satan's plans against my life and to save me from Satan's plans and to save you friends and you don't have to take it like the old rock song goes we don't got to take it we're not going to my God does not want me to have anything to do with cooperating with Satan's plan for my destruction Jesus came to give me life and I'm pressing in for that life friends and so are you Take the hands of Jesus, put on the full armor of God, get into that word of God, start worshiping and praising him. You know, I wanted to spend time playing a little bit of Christmas music. I got my keyboard here. Let me check my time. Uh, I don't like to go too long. But the Lord inspired me because I was in such agonizing pain. I started fasting, really fasting. Sometimes, you know, we all prefer feasting over fasting. Let's admit it, our flesh is a little bit, you know... <laughs> preferring feasting over fasting i said god thank you for allowing me to suffer for a season to get me back into the good and righteous discipline of fasting it's good for your health because of, of what it does autophagy it causes your cells to start cleansing away all the toxins and renewing themselves you i mean i feel 100 percent better i have more energy and the fat is going 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 in the name of jesus it will go and be gone it's very good to fast but most importantly when you fast and pray oh god is there and he answers prayer and it's wonderful so friends the lord reassured me in spite of the kind of things i know and have researched for 28 years and even what's happening in the world today the lord reassured me that he is greater and he has a wonderful plan for his people for those who will seek him and fast and pray god knows how to deliver his children 
from the plans of the enemy. He's been doing it for thousands of years and he has not changed. So friends, commit your life, your future, your destiny into the hands of the living God and trust him. And he will bless you and he will bring you through. Praise the Lord God, the Almighty. Well, maybe time for a few minutes here. I'm going to do a lot more keyboard uh, with the next video. But I want to say thank you, friends, for your prayers. And oh, I'm just reminded by the Holy Spirit. Because I have been too ill to make the videos, my support has gone way down to the point where it affects food. My bills have not been paid now for weeks because this is a viewer and reader supported ministry. I pour everything into my ministry and this is my work full time. It costs money to print tracts. It costs money to give away blankets and Bibles to the Native American children on the reservations here in Montana. And right now, as Christmas approaches, I have been battling a lot of sadness, in fact, because right now my finances are almost non-existent. So I do need your love and your prayers at this time. And I do not need financial support from my viewers because after being so ill and the money that was coming in, I had to spend on special bandages for my legs, certain kinds of uh, things you have to put on it, um, healing. It's very expensive. And so I really do appreciate your love gift at Christmas time. I will put my mailing address, Venmo, Zelle, everything there because I truly do need love and support from the body of Christ. And I thank you so much, friends, for your time. And I have so much exciting things to share with you. And let's keep the crisis right now in Israel and Gaza in prayer because innocent Christians are being killed and their churches destroyed in Gaza by the IDF and this is a fact and I've been publishing many of these reports on my Facebook page to get Christians to pray and right now they are not planning to celebrate Christmas in Gaza even in Bethlehem with wonderful pray for wonderful pastor Munther Isaac he is the pastor of the Christmas church in Bethlehem and he said we are not celebrating this year with all the genocided children and all the horrible things that are happening and lives destroyed and ruined and even Christians being killed and their churches being destroyed. He said, we are in a state of mourning and solidarity with our suffering brothers and sisters in Christ in Gaza and with the children, the suffering children throughout Gaza, which is a good and right and holy thing to do. So friends, consider that at Christmas time, because I promise you, unfortunately, the time and day is coming. We may not be in the world when it happens, but it is coming. When America too will be bombed and cities flattened and destroyed. What goes around comes around and how many times has America brought death and destruction to nations in the Middle East on behalf of Israel and funding now the Gaza genocide. Oh, it will come back to haunt us and bite us. Truly, what you sow is what you will reap, the Bible says. We will need mercy. If we are still here on the earth, we will need much mercy in the times to come. So I encourage you to love these people at a distance. Pray for them. Pray for Pastor Winter Isaac of what they call the Christmas Church in Bethlehem there in the West Bank. You can look them up online. But oh, how they are suffering right now. <coughs> and my Bible says in the word of God that if one member suffer, we all suffer together with that member. I've been suffering deeply in my heart and at this point even praying I said father right now I so want to even seek you to join with a Christian organization a Gaza relief Christian organization to minister to the poor children limbs amputated parents gone orphans oh the horror stories coming out of Gaza now As every honest news analyst knows at this point, this is not in search of Hamas. This is a true genocide to wipe out Gaza for a greater Israel agenda. And oh, how my heart breaks of the people suffering, Christian and non-Christian, for Jesus died for all. So friends, be in prayer, prayer about that. But I do encourage you to pray for me as well, that my health will continue now that I am healed and pray that my ministry will grow. I need so much more finances to reach others for Christ because I live in a nuclear doomsday state. Montana will be one of the first states to go up in smoke and flames. 
when Russia and China finally decide to attack because of the North American missile system here in place in the state of Montana, uh, there in Great Falls, Montana, Malmstrom Air Force Base, all the missile silos. And sadly, those missile silos are on all the Indian reservations. We have 12 tribes and seven reservations, and those missile silos are there. And when the missiles come from Russia and China, when they carpet bomb this state to get rid of those missiles so then they can proceed to attack North America, we're talking about extinction events for the Native Americans in this state and in Wyoming and in North Dakota. This breaks my heart because at this point, normally at this time of the year, I give away blankets, I give away Bibles, I give away food to pastors ministering to the Native Americans up in Browning, Montana at the reservation there and down in Polson, the reservation there. Blackfeet Indians up north in Browning and down in Folsom, it's the Salish, Kootenai, and Fond tribes. I have not even had enough money now to pay my bills because I was so sick I couldn't make videos. So friends, if you're looking for someone to show some Christmas love and mercy and support to, I desperately need it at this time. Not for myself, but really and truly to reach others for Christ at such a time as this. Where yes, America is in the crosshairs of Russia, and China and other nations that are furious we are funding the genocide there in Gaza. We live in very perilous times, but yes, I do still have bills I need to pay that I can't pay. And so friends do come through. I thank you so much. God bless you. I'm praying for you. You have a wonderful evening and I'm going to make some more videos. Hopefully when we get some sunny weather, I'll do it outside, but know that I'm praying for every viewer and every watcher. And um, God bless you all. And the Lord be with you till we meet again. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and look down in the comments section for my PayPal address, my Venmo uh, address, my Zelle, my mailing address, because it really is critical at this time. I truly can't make it without the love and support of the body of Christ that I've been serving now for 28 years at my own personal expense. I need your support now and your love. Thank you so much and God bless you and have a blessed, sacred, Christ glorifying Christmas season with Jesus Christ in the center of it all. God bless you for now. Bye bye. Pamela Ray with Hope for Today. See you in the next video. Goodbye.